Hi guys, so this video is aimed at someone just getting into painting miniatures or maybe someone who, who isn't enjoying painting miniatures as much as they should or not getting the results they, sh they want. Um, kind of a bit like me a few months ago. So I'm going to assemble this Space Marine Captain um, and yeah, follow along with me guys. So obviously the tools we're going to be needing, some snips. Uh, I've got some nice cheap ones but obviously you can get the more expensive ones and a nice blade. Um, this one's fairly dull because it's been used to cut all sorts of stuff up with. Uh, obviously some glue. I'm using this uh, cement glue by Tamil, extra thin. Not too sure what the difference between extra thin and, well, not extra thin is. And then obviously we need some paints. So I've got some paints I'm going to use for dry brushing later. Some grey and some white. And then good old contrast paints. And I'm using the, uh, the Army Painter speed paints. And then a few normal paints and a wash. And also some black primer. Also, we need to prime the figures before we can, uh, well, we can crack on and paint them. So yeah, this little chap, um, single chap in a box. Uh, one of these plastic boxes. There's no way you can get into it. Uh, so obviously, I'm uh, well. I'm going through the back door. Uh, a bit of back door um, activity going on here. And yeah, pop the little sucker out. And obviously, try and get the the front bit out because the front bit has got the instructions. Uh, obviously, because this is only the one dude. Uh, you shouldn't really make too many mistakes because, well, all the parts fit on just the one guy. But there are some times where bits need to go on in an order just to make it easier, really. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but as you can see, good old Games Workshop. Um, yeah, number one is on that sprue. And number two is on this one. And they're surrounded by, well, all kinds of weird numbers. Uh, every number next to each other doesn't sort of correspond in any kind of fashion. Uh, but as we all know, that's probably that's half the fun. You get these sprues and you've got to hunt down the pieces. Obviously, you just look for the uh, the piece that resembles the piece you need. So it's been cut off. Uh, a bit of cleaning up to do. Uh, this is where, obviously, the blade comes in handy. So my one's a nice sort of, well, it's fairly blunt. It's seen better days. Uh, so you want one that's not too sharp because you don't really want to sort of cut too much off. Uh, but as you can see, a bit of scraping. Uh, just keep scraping, just keep scraping, and it will smooth it down to how you need it. And then, yeah, good old bit of glue. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too sure what the difference between this one is and one that isn't extra thin is. Um, I don't know, are they thicker? Let me know, guys, what's the difference between extra thin and normal? Uh, or just thin? I don't know. Anyway, waffling. And then, yeah, just a case of simply following the instructions, cutting the bits out. I say, I am taking my time here, just doing one piece at a time gluing it on just to make sure everything's done sort of properly and it's definitely worth taking your time with this bit um more so getting obviously the um cutting the sprue sort of bits off uh, and just making the miniature look nice for when you when you paint it because once you have painted it any sort of mold lines or sprue bits left on you are going to still see so the good thing i like about the, the these warhammer sort of bits and pieces is you get a variety of combinations of things to use and in this case this guy gets two different swords um, and I prefer the normal sword, uh, just because this is going to be my king for the, the chess set that I am currently making. So one last sort of go over, making sure there are no mould lines or sprue bits left on, just to get it all nice and ready for painting. And when we do paint, obviously to make it easier to paint, I've got these little painting handles that I have 3D printed. Uh, but literally you could use anything here, uh, any sort of like small bottles or cork or anything that you can hold in your hand nicely just so the figure can sit on it, uh, making it easier for you to paint. So, just about to paint this guy, and then I realised I hadn't done the gun barrel. Um, and yeah, guys, if you don't drill out gun barrels, you are the lowest of the low. People will mock you, they'll avoid you in the street, they'll point, they'll stare. So, rather than using a drill bit, which is what I used to do, uh, and I hate it, I use my little scalpel. It just means the perfect size to get in there, um, just keep wiggling it, wiggling it, obviously take your time, um, but yeah, keep doing this and you'll get a perfect little uh, little gun barrel drilled out, rather than going out and buying a drill bit and obviously using a drill and, well, things getting messy. Um, yeah, this is something I started doing and it works a treat and doesn't take too long at all. So the first stage of painting any miniature is obviously get some primer on, otherwise the paint you put on could eventually just sort of peel off or wear off. So yeah, good old black primer, and now some good dry brushing. And people have often asked the brushes I use, are they expensive ones? Uh, no, these are makeup brushes, brought off Amazon, 
a pack of about eight or nine or even ten for about three pound or three pound ninety nine. Sorry, so yeah, four pound. Um, and then yeah, get some grey on there. Obviously, you you kind of like rub most of it off on the old paper towel there, and then go over and well, dry brush. Um, there's probably a bit too much grey on this, but generally when I do do it, uh, the whatever grey I do use does sort of uh, lighten up uh, or darken up even once it dries. And then similar process with white. Uh, but when I use the white, I do make sure to get lots of the white off. So this really is a dry brush. And I am having to sort of brush really hard uh, to get the white on there. And there we go. This is a good start. Uh, got obviously plenty of shade, contrast, dark areas. And looking good. So my style of painting relies heavily on contrast paints. As well, they do all the work. So you can get a variety of, of them. You can get obviously Citadel ones, green stuff. Uh, world ones and army paint and speed paint ones and there's loads of others uh, I haven't tried yet so I'm going to start off by using magic blue uh, this is one I've been using recently to do the other space marines uh, so this guy's going to be part of a Warhammer 40k chess set that I'm currently building and this guy is going to be obviously the king so I forgot to mention that this guy was actually sent to me by those lovely people over at Chaos Cards um, yeah they've recently been sending me a lot of stuff uh, for me to be able to make this uh, say this this chess set so there's a link in the description, guys. Go check them out. And there's also a discount code. Uh, it's called CHECKMATE, all caps. And if you use that, you get 5% off any orders over £30 on their miniature range. So yeah, go check out Chaos Cards, guys, and uh, show them some love. So yeah, these speed paints, um, as you're probably aware from the last few months, I absolutely love them. As I say, that they do do all the work for you, especially with the, uh, the dry brushing uh, underneath. Uh, these really do sort of give a lot of like highlights, edge lighting, uh, and definitely obviously darker areas, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. So you are just painting well, nice and normal. Obviously keeping within the lines. As uh, one thing you don't want to do is go over the edge, because with the speed paints that kind of messes things up uh, quite a lot. So yeah, really the main thing is to keep within the edges. As you can see though, on his knee there, I have gone over the edge, but that's not too bad, as that will be painted with a normal sort of white afterwards. So with his cloak, uh, obviously in the picture, because I'm trying to do as much as I can to make him look like he is in the picture, the inside of his cloak is white. Um, yeah, I had considered doing that, but this is where the difference between a, sort of, <laughs> a painter like me or a professional painter. A professional painter probably would have painted the cloak separately and then attached it afterwards because it would be very difficult to get up and in at the back. Um, so that's why I'm just painting it all red just because that makes things so much easier for me. And, well, I think it still looks nice really being red. So, yeah, Space Marines, there's not too many colours to them, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Makes them nice and easy to start with. Um, definitely a good sort of figure to be a beginner with. Uh, again, because there aren't too many sort of colours involved. So with the gold, I'm obviously just using a normal gold. Uh, this isn't a speed paint or contrast paint of any kind. And one thing I've always found with the gold... You generally need to go over and do a couple of layers. The gold always seems to be quite, um, not exactly watery, but um, yeah, fairly transparent. So I noticed when I was painting, I had put a little piece on the wrong way around. Uh, so obviously it's worth changing things as you sort of come across any little mistakes you may make. Um, and yeah, obviously it didn't take long to pop it off. Bit of glue, pop it back on. As obviously it's part of his... Uh, is sort of like, well, not exactly belts, but the thing that keeps his cloak on. And yes, yeah, so I love this guy. Really nice and chunky. I uh, love how he looks. And yeah, this guy's going to look really good on my uh, on my chess set, which, same so my chess set's coming along really nicely. Um, I've nearly completed all of the, uh, the Space Marine team. And there's a few of the Orc teams to go. And I have mentioned in a previous video, guys, that I am going to be popping down to Chaos Cards. Um, and yeah, I'll be taking the chess set with me. So if you're interested in seeing me or the chess set when it's finished, then uh, yeah, keep an eye out for the dates that I'll be going down to Chaos Cards. As well, I'm also going to be doing a little painting session down there, which will be pretty cool. So yeah, again, for the uh, the weapon, uh, just using a normal silver here. And what I do with any of the normal colours, at the very end, I will go over and put a sort of a wash over it. Just to, again, give it some, some sort of like character, some life, um, and to make some sort of shadows and all that sort of good stuff. So his knee also gets painted with just sort of normal paint, uh, just obviously normal white, and that's going to get a transfer put on it afterwards. Uh, I will be showing the transfer as well because that's something I've 
I've only recently got into doing is putting transfers on. Um, it's not too difficult, just more fiddly, if uh, if anything. But um, yeah, so knee pad, nice and white. And then say the last thing I always do is the uh, the washers. I always save this for the very end. Um, obviously, because it normally has to go on near the very end. But it's also nice that when I do the washes, it's kind of like in my head. It's like, yeah, this figure's pretty much almost done, uh, which is really cool. So, yeah, when I do make these uh, paint these figures, I do get them to obviously my happy standard. Uh, everyone's different, especially when it comes to painting uh, in different techniques, different styles, and how we want the thing to look when it is complete. So this is my happy standard. Obviously, you guys paint to your happy standard um, because obviously that's all that counts is just being happy with how he, uh, how he looks. So, yeah, luckily I've got some transfers because this guy doesn't actually come with any, uh, which is quite surprising as there's obviously a transfer in the picture. Um, but, yeah, he didn't come with any. But luckily, I say I've got a few sort of left over. Well, I've got loads left over because uh, I haven't been using them recently. And, it's, yeah, it's just a case of getting the transfer, getting it wet, uh, and then just sliding the um, the transfer over. And then that's job done. Let's see him in all his glory. And there we go, one miniature, tabletop ready, in about 45 minutes. And the great thing is, this is obviously a great base and a great start. If you wanted to carry on and do some sort of edge highlighting or anything sort of special with the old sword there, um, you can. But say 45 minutes and you get to this and yeah, so for me, this is job done. Uh, I may well revisit these uh, some of these miniatures that I've painted in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm certainly happy um, and yeah, love how he looks. Okay, so I want to say a big thank you and a shout out to all my lovely patrons, as well as my sponsors, Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic, for helping support the channel so I can keep on making these videos. Okay, guys, leave comments, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, eat cookies, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.